Hello and welcome to my channel. I want to show you another drawing of Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time. This was done in charcoal. I used woodless charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Michael and about my drawing techniques and tools. So let's get to it. I'm doing the sketch with a Stadler graphite pencil. The size of the paper is about 9 times 12 inches. I decided to do a larger portrait. Lately I've been doing a lot of these larger portraits where the face is covering much of the paper. Uh, these are very detailed and they obviously take a lot more time. So Michael Jordan is one of the greatest athletes of all time. Uh, recently he has released a documentary about his career. I haven't seen it yet but I've heard that there's a lot of old footage of his older games so it must be pretty good. I used a little bit of charcoal powder to cover the background. I created the charcoal powder by sharpening my charcoal pencil. I hardly ever buy charcoal powder. I just prefer to use the sharpening residue. But I use that in a combination with vine charcoal. So my main drawing tools for this piece will be woodless charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is soft and easily manipulated and the background that I'm covering now is going to be a combination of vine charcoal and compressed charcoal. I blended the background mostly with brushes and the larger the brush, the smoother the blending. Now I'm using a medium charcoal pencil, fairly sharpened, to work on the ear. And it's always good to be patient when you're drawing ears because even though uh, people want to focus on other parts of the head and the face. If you oversimplify the ears, that can ruin your portrait. And I've done that a lot in the past. That's why I, I'm starting with the ear and I'm trying to give it a little more attention. Now the thing is that we have to have a clean edge here to the left. A clean edge between the ear and the background. And there needs to be a contrast between the darker background and the light side of the ear. But uh, you must also understand that even the light side of the ear cannot be completely white. So I need to have some contrast there. But it can't be completely white. I'm going to re reserve those uh, very light areas for some of the highlights on some of the some parts of the ear. <clears throat> I made a separate video on drawing ears a while back and I talked about the anatomy of the ear and uh, the shape of them, the shape of ears varies. Some of them are more flat than others. Michael has fairly deep earlobes and as you can see I've moved on to the eyes and the area in between the eyes and I'm shading this with a combination of a soft charcoal pencil and a medium charcoal pencil. I used a soft charcoal pencil for some of the darkest areas like the pupil and some some of these areas around the corners of the eyes and the eyelashes. Uh, Michael has fairly long eyelashes and I don't know how much you can see that here but 
his eyes are uh, of a little bit lighter color kind of like a light greenish brown I'm not sure um, I'm doing the same thing shading the area around the mouth this is just uh, the initial shading where I'm uh, putting in some of these darker areas and uh, trying to establish these uh, um, larger areas of darker value and later I'll be moving on to the areas of lighter value and I'm doing most of this with compressed charcoal because that's essentially what a charcoal pencil is made of it's made of compressed charcoal and compressed charcoal is darker than vine charcoal and it's also a little bit more difficult to move and erase but uh, most of the shading on the face will be done with vine charcoal because I can move that very easily and vine charcoal doesn't really stick to the surface of the paper as much it can be moved a lot more easily like I said it just sort of sits on top of the, pa uh, the surface of the paper but there are ways to push it in using your brushes and tutilians so when I start blending um, I'm going to be varying the amount of pressure depending on how dark or how light I want a certain area to be but for now I've done most of the work with a charcoal pencil and this is what it looks like so far and now as you can see I'm using a small uh, stick of vine charcoal to put in some of these areas which will be a little bit lighter they seem a little bit dark now but once I start blending and moving that soft charcoal around it will get a lot lighter my goal is to cover most of the face with at least some amount of value that way uh, some of these highlights will stand out when I, when I say highlights I mean the lighter portions of the head especially uh, on the top of the head and on the forehead and there, also, there, there will also be some drops of sweat and things like that all of these areas will be a lot lighter and in order for them to really stand out and appear glossy and shiny uh, everything around them needs to be darker so contrast is needed for the highlights to stand out I'm adding a little more value in over some of the areas which I already covered with the vine charcoal and where I feel like a charcoal pencil would be too much I'm just reinforcing some of the areas which were previously covered with the vine charcoal with a, with a little bit more vine charcoal and I'm gently pushing that vine charcoal in using my brushes varying the amount of pressure to decide how much uh, darker I want to make it the stick that I'm using now is also vine charcoal uh, the one that I used initially was much smaller but I decided to pick up a longer piece of vine charcoal because I just found it more convenient to do this shading and you can see that I'm doing my shading almost uh, like a form of cross hatching that you see in comic books uh, but these lines will not be visible once I start blending them but this was a quick way for me to uh, cover the areas that needed to be shaded and to to separate the light side of the face and the shadow side of the face because obviously uh, the right side of the face or his left side is a lot lighter but the lighting is kind of confusing because obviously uh, these photos that are taken in uh, during games uh, because of the the artificial lights coming from various directions from multiple directions uh, there can be the, the shadows can be a little bit confusing so that's another challenge here 
the shadows and the light source. Uh, they can be a little bit confusing when you're trying to show the topography of the face. Uh, my footage is a little bit blurry here. I apologize for that. My camera sometimes goes out of focus a little bit. This is not terrible. I've seen worse, but it could be better. So it's not bad, and I hope that it will uh, refocus very quickly. Michael has high cheekbones, and his cheeks are kind of sunken and that's why I need to shade that lower portion of the face around the uh, around the cheeks and under the cheekbones to make it a lot darker and I'm also using a, a soft charcoal pencil under the chin because that's one of the darkest areas in the drawing because uh, there's a, a lot of dark shadow there uh, now I'm using a charcoal pencil this is a medium one to go over these areas which I previously covered with vine charcoal to make some of these areas a little bit darker uh, to uh, and also to uh, create a little bit more texture in those areas because uh, I don't want it to look perfectly smooth <coughs> but when I feel like the lines are too visible I can always knock that back a little bit using my brushes. I'm using two types of brushes. Uh, one is a softer one, the other one is pretty stiff. Uh, bristle brush. So the softer one pushes the charcoal around gently and the uh, harder one pushes the charcoal into the paper and blends more thoroughly. I'm also using a black colored pencil on top of both the vine charcoal and the black and the charcoal pencil. And I use the black colored pencil to add a little more texture and to add some more details on top of uh, what I've already done with charcoal. And I also sometimes use it to clean up some of the edges. What I'm using now is a Kohinoor pencil eraser. It's, uh, it's an eraser in a pencil that can be sharpened. And you can see that I started pulling some highlights with it and I uh, drew in some of the drops of sweat on the forehead and on the top of the head. So I want to make it look like he's sweating a lot because the photo that I worked off was probably taken uh, during a game. And he has a kind of an angry expression in this photo which is one of the reason, reasons why I picked it, because he was a fierce competitor and always wanted to win. So I mean, he may not have been the nicest person, but he was uh, the best basketball player ever to have played the game. Uh, there are some people who disagree with that, but these people usually have very short memories. LeBron James fans in particular have very short memories because they are very selective. Their memory is very selective when it comes to his uh, failures and successes. I think that LeBron James is not a top 10 player of all time in my opinion. Kobe Bryant is, even though Kobe Bryant was probably also grossly overrated. But uh, with LeBron James, I've, I don't think I've ever seen an athlete where there was such a huge gap between his actual accomplishments and performance and the way he is portrayed in the media. You can't keep losing and be considered the best player in the world. That said, he was, he has uh, won a few championships, even though he played for very stacked teams, and um, he has had some success. So he was, uh, he was one of the top players in the league for a very long time. So there's no doubt that he is a great player. 
but there were many many great players in the history of the NBA so I would not rank him or put him in the top 10 of all time so easily but his career is not over yet as for Kobe Bryant he is certainly a lot more accomplished than LeBron James and is closer to Michael in both in terms of his accomplishments and in terms of skill his skill uh, but I think what sets Jordan apart is that he kept evolving as a player throughout his career to a greater degree than uh, Kobe Bryant because Kobe Bryant as skilled as he was remained a hero ball player with little self-awareness a volume shooter and a hero ball player that's essentially what he was a highly skilled one but he didn't really progress beyond that uh, that's why I'm reluctant to put him in the same category as Michael Jordan in the modern league if you want to have a rough idea about what Michael Jordan would do in the modern league you would have to imagine a faster quicker version of Kawhi Leonard who can also jump higher and is a lot more confident and a lot more clutch more of a clutch player and that's a scary thought but that's essentially what Michael Jordan was uh, I've done most of the work on the face and I think that I have achieved some nice contrast on uh, the top of the head where all of these highlights are. You can see that I've uh, cleaned up these highlights using a combination of my pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser. The advantage of the kneaded eraser is that it allows you to clean up the area is covered with charcoal very nicely because it simply lifts up the charcoal but on the other hand the pencil eraser gives you more precision I didn't struggle too much with this portrait although like I said I do think it's fairly challenging because of the shadows and the lighting uh, there are a lot of shadows, uh, the especially prominent ones are under the eyebrows and under the nose, under the chin. But there's, there are also some more subtle ones like for example um, that shadow uh, around the left ear. So lots of interesting, go interesting things going on and lots of details to capture. I didn't want to put in too much detail into his jersey. Uh, the, the NBA logo is going to be there, but that's about it. And I'm going to I'm going to shade the jersey so that we can see some folds in it, so that it looks more natural. But uh, like I said, I'm not going to put too much work into it. I also did that using a combination of vine charcoal and charcoal pencil in case you're wondering uh, what the charcoal pencils that I'm using are uh, these are worrisome woodless charcoal pencils as I always say I don't really care too much about the brands the only reason why I'm using these woodless charcoal pencil is, pencils is because uh, they are easier to sharpen and sharpening can sometimes be difficult with charcoal pencils so uh, whatever I can sharpen easily is a good charcoal pencil for me and I'm using two woodless charcoal pencils the soft one and the medium one the soft one gives me uh, even darker tones I use it for pitch black dark uh, areas and you should use that sparingly and now I'm covering the rest of the background to the right uh, the background in my reference photo was a lot darker but I didn't want to create such a dark background I wanted 
I wanted a slightly lighter background. I don't really like pitch black backgrounds usually. Now you can see that I'm softening everything with a large brush. I blended the background with a large brush and now I'm cleaning up the edges of this jersey uh, with a kneaded eraser and with a black colored pencil. I just want clean edges there and I kind of rushed through the drawing of this jersey so I'm trying to clean it up a little bit so that it wouldn't be too distracting because I want the rest of my drawing to look as impressive as the face because I've spent a lot more time working on the portrait itself on the face itself but it's almost done I just have a little bit of work to do on the shoulder here on the right and once I do that the drawing will be pretty much done so like I said I've included a black colored pencil here and there a little bit but 99% of the work has been done with charcoal either with wine charcoal or charcoal pencils you could do the same thing with graphite but I think the graphite obviously is not as dark and it would take a lot more time to do this because with graphite it's a lot more difficult to build darker values so I need to shade this lower portion of the shoulder a little bit more in this area around the neck and there's also a little bit of shadow here here the drawing is pretty much uh, done uh, by the way I've already sprayed it with a single coat of fixative and I'm just cleaning up some of the edges now using a black color pencil but these are just the finishing touches I'm going to sign it here on the left a small inconspicuous signature and that's it as far as I'm concerned this portrait is done uh, I've already done several drawings of Michael Jordan I don't know how many exactly uh, at least four or five perhaps but I think I only did two of them in charcoal And this is, the, this is the second largest portrait of him that I did. I had an even larger one done in colored pencil. I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see uh, more of the detail on his face. And this is what it looks like again when it's zoomed out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to give me a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.